Hi friends, this is Krish Diyavan Naksal and we are talking about marriage. We have been talking about it for a while and uh, what I have been saying is it's there's a lot of stress and frustration generally on both sides, on both on the side of the husband as well as the wife because one thing is it is not clear what the hell is expected of them, what is expected within that relationship. Stresses build up for a variety of reasons because people don't talk. Why don't people talk? Because, well, they are trying to be peaceful. Why are they trying to be peaceful? Because if they talk, they discuss. Uh, it's going to turn into a jagra. It's going to turn into a huge quarrel. It does. And in any relationship, a lot of material piles up. First year, there are three issues that have not been discussed they have gone into the background, but they are just lurking under the surface, waiting to explode. There may be money related issues. There may be re issues related to sex, unsatisfactory sex, infrequent sex. They may be related to livelihood issues. You are not earning enough. Why don't you earn enough? This is not what was supposed to happen. It may be about money matters like in your family, we are not getting enough of a share. Your brothers are getting more of a share. Why aren't you getting this and blah, blah. There are, I mean, of course, I'm talking about a joint family type scenario. Individual family living separately. You can have stresses like, boss, you are spending all your time at office. You are not coming home. You are, you, the man may say that about his wife. The wife may say that about her husband. You are all the time there for your uh, your colleagues you're laughing and talking with your colleagues your female colleagues your male colleagues but the moment you put down the phone and talk to me you're not laughing anymore you're serious you don't want to laugh you don't want to talk you got all the time in the world if you're talking to a, a colleague and in this especially when female colleagues are involved then things can get really complicated you're like hey the wife says to the husband, hey, hey man, listen, you're, uh, when your female colleague calls, you're talking two hours, three hours, you're listening to her, you seem to be listening to all her dukhras, all her problems, all her issues, you're listening and you're trying to solve it very patiently. You're listening for two hours, three hours, four hours. She calls up at all hours of day and night and you pick up the call. And when I have a problem, you don't want to talk about it. You want to cut it. You don't know. You just say, no, I want my peace. Now, it can happen the other way around. The husband says to the wife, hey, listen, with your boss, he is a real dick about a lot of things. He causes a lot of problems. You yourself complain about him to me. But you'll pick up the call at night. And you listen patiently. Even if you don't like it, you'll be like, yes, sir, no, sir, okay, sir, yes, sir, I'll do it, sir. Okay. And then you sit down at night and make a presentation. Instead of coming to bed with me, there you are uh, on the laptop making a presentation at night. So, what is going on? In traditional marriages, in the traditional world, the man lived in a man's world there were generally men around him. There weren't any or there weren't many close relationships with women. And it might be women, his mother, his sister, his cousin, at best. You know, relationships tend to, tended to be very formalized. Today that has changed. Today that has changed. You have a female colleague. And... Uh, there used to be a time where people, colleagues didn't call each other after 5 p.m. Nobody called each other. They, they went home to their families and they were with their families. And unless there was a fire in the office or there was some kind of a crisis, nobody phoned each other. Work was strictly in the workplace. Now that has changed. Work comes home. People bring their work home. Workplace colleagues call up. 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, Saturdays, Sundays, they call up. And it becomes complicated. It gets like, it, these are irritants. They are like, husband says to wife, hey, listen, who is this guy Amit there? No, no, he's a colleague. He's just a colleague. 
Yeah, he is just a colleague, very nice, and this just a colleague guy keeps messaging you. I get, I see your phone beeping at twelve and one and two in the night. We are sleeping and bzz bzz, and you will get up and you will respond to him. What the fuck is going on? No, no, no. It's just work. We are, we were talking about office. Then switch your phone off. No, no, I can't do that because it's important. Tomorrow we are making a presentation. Now all of this may be about, may be true. Same thing happens on the other side. Hey, Manali, who is? Who is this Manali? She keeps messaging you all the time, and sometimes you are laughing, Manali, Manali, and what is going on? And then when suddenly when the kids want to talk to you or they want help with the homework, uh, there you are showing your manliness. Hey, I don't want to. Don't disturb me. What is this? What's going on? So, this is a feature of modern life. especially where both are, both the sides are working or even if one side is working it's a feature of the present day new um new type of office like life office work where there are no hours and there is no boundary between personal life and office life there is no boundary there are no boundaries the boundaries have been demolished leads to a lot of irritants there are a lot of irritants now of course it's not that irritants can't come from elsewhere but this is like a like a highway of irritants office work office colleagues even if they are male office colleagues i mean same same sex office colleagues amit calls amit messages amit does this amit does that the guy is the, basically anything happens ha huh, amit bolo he picks up the phone and he is with his wife he is having dinner he is in a restaurant or he is in the theater watching a movie and amit calls and ha bol amit ha i'll call you during interval hey, what the fuck man what's going on where is our privacy now this happens all these kinds of things happen this is life this is what's happening and when all this is happening in the midst of all this the question is where are the reference points of marriage what are the reference points like what is what should be done what shouldn't be done what is and what isn't earlier you had traditions every woman who is not your wife is bhabhi so bhabhi ji how are you bhen ji how are you depending on where you are in gujarat everybody is a bhen ji here in in mumbai i would i would say more women are bhabis or bhabhi ji but there's a distance there's a formal distance you don't flirt too much you don't talk too much you don't share too much you don't send each other texts you talk when you meet at a formal occasion and that's it it's over there is no there are no internal connections that kind of a formality is no longer there so what are the reference points of marriage what happens within marriage what these are issues and these issues have to be resolved now how can these issues be resolved issues will happen if you are a modern couple getting married today in 2023 you can expect this to happen this is a normal thing you will have to you better have a policy and the policy has to be adaptable you can't have say it's a rigid policy we will never take calls from opposite sex people that's not going to work or i feel very jealous when you call okay so you do feel jealous you may feel jealous and you may have reason to feel jealous there really may be hanky panky a foot so many things happen but there has to be a framework to discuss it so now again to return to the framework what is the framework one of the frameworks which is completely forgotten within this whole thing is when you have decided to get married there was a kind of a contract it was an implicit contract the contract between man and woman is implicit implicit means it is not written down it is not explicit it is not there is no signed registered agreement there are no points there are no paragraphs and clauses but while it is a relationship and it is till death do us part you know we will be together till we die and janam janam ke sathi and all this kind of thing for those of you who believe in all that 
एट द वेरी लीस्ट फर्गेट अबाउट जन्म जन्म के साथ ही देर आर सम थिंग्स विच आर कंसिडर्ड नेसेसरी नाउ दोज नेसेसरी थिंग्स हैव स्टॉप्ड एपनिंग so what are those necessary things let me point out a few things and some of this is really going to piss off feminists but i'm going to talk about this feminism more than others and yeah and when i speak yes i have a male bias i am a man i experience life as a man so i am not going to pretend that i am going to be very equal between men and women i try but if the women feel no 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 you are being unfair to women yeah okay then you figure it out or you can reply you can make a video and tell me what's what it is from the women's point of view but i will talk to you from a male point of view so here's the thing there was a contract there was a marriage contract what was that contract now the contract can be different for each couple for example if both are hikers maybe the contract would be we will at least do two hiking vacations every year at least one week long that's a contract that is part of the contract that is part of the marriage understanding at least two vacations at least or it may be a different contract maybe they don't go together maybe they can't maybe his interests are different and her interests are different maybe he is a hiker or maybe he is a biker maybe she is not maybe she is a corporate sort maybe she is a corporate career climber corporate career ladder climber he is a business entrepreneur type guy so then they support each other the deal is okay listen first four years i am going to have children i will have two children the children are going to grow up to be say one one and a half years old after that i will resume my career i will start my career then you meanwhile try and quit your career she says to the husband for some time you stay at home and you will take care of the children until they are 8 years old and after that you may resume and we we both may resume our work freely so in this way my career doesn't get disrupted more than 3 4 years your career also gets disrupted another 3 4 years and then we are both able to do what we want you do your business i do my career whatever whatever so you are going to support me and i am going to support you you do your biking thing i will support you i will be on leave and i will take care of the children when you are doing your biking you go out as a biker as for me you will support me for this kind of things you know you have some kind of an understanding some kind of a a, a deal it's a deal and if you are able to make these deals then and if you are able to negotiate the deals the deal may change the deal may change for example she may have said look i am only going to stay in the house for until the child grows up to be 1 year old or the children you know one child will be 1 year old and other child will be 2 and 1/2 years old after that i am going to go out you know to my to my career but then situation changes something changes he gets called abroad then she says okay fine your foreign thing so okay let us give it some more time i will come abroad with you you know let us all emigrate to canada my career was here but let us leave it and emigrate to canada so you have to negotiate these things depending on what life throws at you now in order to negotiate it in order to negotiate such things and continuously maintain a communication a connect where you can discuss these things you should be able to listen to each other minimum bare minimum you should be able to discuss with each other your feelings hey, listen na i am feeling very insecure about this boss ye i am i am not happy with how things are going you should be able to say that without the other person turning all angry and combative and vengeful and you know shutting you down and all insulting you and all you should be able to say things like listen i am not feeling very secure about this situation okay or uh, listen i am not very happy you have this uh, this manali who keeps calling you from office she keeps calling all the time at least you should set some boundaries 
tell her not to call after 8 to 8 pm please or max to max 9 pm after that no more calls no more whatsapp then whatever else is there please do it next morning please i feel very insecure and i don't like how here we are making love and boom there is a text from manali i don't like that i i feel uh, i mean it really pisses me off okay so don't do it and it should be heard it should be understood it should be respected there should be this communication where else do we do, do this kind of communication we do it in office of course we do it in office in office this kind of corporate language works hey listen i am not liking this i don't think this is how things should be done around here we have changed from what we had earlier decided this is the language that's used in corporates so in corporates to a large extent i'm not saying corporate world is perfect it is not in fact it is very very imperfect it's a mess corporates are a mess they are a different kind of a mess but even so there is some amount of give and take and understanding and we hold our emotions in we may be feeling very very angry but we will just say oh no 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 i'm not liking this i'm not liking this at home we will shout and scream and we will make a big fuss at office no 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 i'm sorry i am not on board with this so we are we are able to communicate our feelings in a very controlled way what happens at home shouting screaming nobody wants to listen if you acted in an office the way you act at home your office would throw you out your they would call security and say take this idiot out one one day one incident or two incidents would be enough you you would be finished your career would be over they will throw you out hr will write you a letter your your behavior was highly inappropriate da da da, da gone you are gone your your career is over or at least that job is over unless you and you unless you go and apologize and really 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 you know eat humble pie you are able to do even that people are able to go and apologize and say well i am sorry it was impulsive of me and all that kind of thing people will do that in office they will write apology letter but what happens at home nothing sab sab log apne taon mein nobody wants to apologize nobody wants to climb down everybody is the king of the hill or the queen of the hill what happens why so long story short one thing that's clearly happening is the courtesy that we give to others even in our social circle and in our office and the seriousness with which we handle our office matters the courtesy with which we offer uh, handle our office matters we don't do it at home that's kind of it's pretty widespread and if someone else has other experiences i would be happy to hear it or i would be very happy to even publish their experiences whatever their experiences are but this happens okay now i'm going to come to one very 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 touchy point very touchy it's about sex and it's about men and sex now let's be very clear about this see what happens this deal this contract for between men and women according to me is something like this tell me if i'm wrong there's a saying that men offer emotional support in uh, exchange for sex and women offer sex in exchange for emotional support now it's a cliche obviously when you're married it's not this kind of a transaction but there is a certain truth in what we are saying here there is a certain truth that i think every man and every woman will recognize and women may want to deny but it's a fact and the fact of the matter is something like this men are generally more sexually oriented it's like do you want to have sex yeah sure why not that's that's the general man and the general woman is like hmm, not now maybe later so she has to be in the mood he is always in the mood i'm i'm broadly i'm of course generalizing and there may be people with different temperaments but generally speaking he is always in the mood she needs to be put into the mood she will often do it as a reward to him he is not a man generally doesn't do it as a reward to his wife for, for him it's a take for her it's a give so 
there is something like that on the other side emotional emotional support for example uh, uh, she is crying she she wants to be heard she needs to vent and she needs him to hear her patiently she needs to be angry about what happened in office and she just wants him to hear patiently doesn't usually happen the other way around she needs emotional support that's kind of a norm he needs emotional support isn't exactly a norm he usually a man will generally bottle it in hold it in he's having a bad day at office he's having a bad spell at office he'll he'll not talk about it he doesn't want to talk about it. if he talks about it he'll talk about it very limited and he will have a very cut and dry way of putting things he'll put it in boxes women ah oh, they they it's a different ling- lingo it's a different way of talking there's a more emotion in it he shouldn't have done that she shouldn't have done that blah 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 so then if he tries to suggest a solution she may say shut up i am arun i don't i don't need your solutions i just need you to listen i am venting just listen so there is this need to vent so emotional need women sexual need men i am generalizing now the emotional need part it is always possible to ask because it's very easy it's very socially acceptable and if a man isn't emotionally available it's very easy for a woman to complain to her friend hi he's not a, he's very unavailable he doesn't like to listen every time i start talking he just shuts the door on me and he goes and uh, he reads his newspapers or he goes on go, goes on youtube or whatever he doesn't want to engage with me he wants to be entertained that's all it's easy for her to complain now on the other side this guy he doesn't get action he doesn't get it often enough he doesn't get it in the frequency he needs or wants for him it's a release it's a it's a reward also it's like okay i have two kids i am having a tough life i am having a job i leave the kids to school and then i go to, go to work i want a reward and if his wife is not giving him that reward angry thoughts build up what the fuck does she think she is here what the fuck does she think she is and all kind of other grievances build up now women for the most part are not willing to look at this they don't want to look at this so i often tell women listen think of a guy as a machine your husband is a machine just he needs oiling he needs maintenance regularly he just needs maintenance and if you don't maintain regularly the machine malfunctions then you'll say the machine is a bad machine but that's not the machine being bad that's just you not servicing it frequently i'm krishna urban naxal jai maharashtra jai hind jai jawan जय किसान